Hey everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog. Let's go. Today we're gonna make two types of risers. One like this. And a second type like this. So a sound like this is called a riser. Not surprisingly, because it rises in pitch or it gives us the feeling of movement from low up to high. When you're composing any kind of music, movement should always be a theme in your mind that you're thinking about how you're gonna make this thing feel like it's moving. Because a static loop that doesn't feel like it's moving is not gonna keep the attention of the listener very long. And so somehow you have to figure out how to build in dimensions of movement into your song. And one such tool is the riser. And the two types specifically are tonal risers and atonal risers. If you're not familiar with the words tonal and atonal, when I say tonal, I basically mean any sound that has a pitch that can then move up and down, like notes on a piano keyboard. When I say atonal, I mean sounds that don't have a definite pitch. White noise is a prime example like that. If you look at white noise on a spectrum analyzer, you're not gonna be able to say that's its pitch. So if you understand these two types of sound, you have a lot of different options on how to create a riser. Let's make a tonal riser first. All you need is literally any synthesizer. And what we're gonna be using is a concept called pitch bend. If you've ever seen a synthesizer keyboard, very often on the left-hand side, there are these two little wheels that you can turn. One of them is called the mod wheel and the other one's called the pitch bend wheel. And that one can bend up or it can bend down so that when you hold a note on the keyboard and then you move the pitch bend, you can hear the pitch of that note descend or ascend depending on the settings of your synthesizer. And so think of the pitch bend wheel as something that is sending a signal that says bend the pitch 0%, so just play the original pitch, or pitch it up 100% or pitch it down 100%. And you can then, in your synthesizer, say whether that's going to be one semitone up the maximum, or one semitone down, or three semitones up, or in our case, we're gonna set it to the absolute maximum, and in a lot of synthesizers, that's 24 semitones up, that's like two octaves up. So that when you move the pitch bend wheel, it's gonna go from its original pitch all the way through two octaves of tone. And now don't worry if you don't have a keyboard like this with one of those little wheels. We're gonna do all of this in software because when you do a pitch bend, what it does is it sends MIDI data. Now we can just simulate that in Ableton, in Reason or in any DAW. We can create a clip on our timeline and just like we can program MIDI notes, we can program pitch bends as well. So concretely in Ableton, what you would do is you would create a MIDI clip and let's make it four bars long, a nice long riser. And you play one note, one long note. Then inside that clip, you find the MIDI parameter for pitch bend, and then you automate it over time so that it moves from its minimum to its maximum. Now all you have to do is go into your synthesizer and find yourself a sound patch or program a patch that you like the character of. And once you have a sound that you like, now you just need to make sure that when you pitch bend up, it's going to go up very far, not just two or three semitones, because that's not going to give the dramatic effect we're looking for. And so every synth somewhere has a setting called the pitch bend range, which by default is often set to two or three semitones. And you're going to pump that all the way up to 24 semitones. And when you hit play on that, this is what you're going to get. And feel free to scroll through presets until you find a sound that you like, and then immediately go to the pitch bend settings and bump that up to the maximum. Once you get kind of fluent at that particular move, browsing through sounds goes pretty quickly. You can do this with single notes and it doesn't really matter which note you use, but if you're a bit clever, you might want the sound to start and or end on a note that works well with the rest of your harmony. Like for example, the root note of the scale or the fifth note of the scale. In terms of treatment, I like to bathe this thing in crazy amounts of reverb and then put a little bit of LFO tool on there so that it kind of bounces along with the track. And that's how you make tonal risers. As a little side anecdote, this is a technique that builds up a huge amount of tension in your track. And that's used a lot in horror movies. 
And someone once described this to me as the concept of tone clusters. So what you would do in a horror movie is play literally any group of notes, not paying attention to any harmony, really just a smoosh of notes together, and then pitch bend those up slowly. It gives a very kind of a, it gives a very kind of a disorienting and unpleasant feeling, which is perfect for horror sound design. And so maybe in some of the more aggressive genres like techno, that might be what you're looking for. Now let's talk about atonal risers. So like I said, atonal risers don't have a definite pitch. You want to start with something like white noise. Not necessarily white noise, because that can sometimes be a little bit cliche, but there are many sounds in the world that are atonal. So for example, you could use Foley sounds like water, or even things like tape hiss, or something that has a little bit more character than just straight up digital white noise coming out of your synth. So first what you're gonna need is to just have this atonal sound for four bars. And it is a bit cliche, but let me just use straight up white noise coming out of a synthesizer. So I take any synthesizer that's capable of generating white noise, set the oscillators instead of a sine or a sawtooth wave, set it to white noise, and just hold a note for four bars. Simple enough. Then what we're going to do is put a bandpass filter over it. That's a kind of a filter that rolls off both the low and the high end around a certain frequency. And then what we're going to do is we're going to automate that frequency to go up, 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 which is then going to give us that rising, rising feeling. So you can do this with some simple automation in your DAW, and you can just use a transparent filter for that like this. Or you can get creative by layering on a whole bunch of effects onto this to turn that white noise into something a little bit more characterful. Now, if you're ready for this, I want to give you some homework. Next time that you sit down to produce, instead of actually producing a track, produce a whole bunch of these risers instead and save them in a folder somewhere so that you can then reuse them. First of all, it's gonna give you good practice in exploring these techniques again and again and again, just for one day. And secondly, you're gonna be giving your future self a whole bunch of ammunition for those days when you're gonna to be too lazy to do this process inside of a project. So make yourself a riser, duplicate the channel, freeze and flatten that duplicate, Right click on the audio file that's been generated, click show in browser, and then drag that file to a folder in your favorites where you know you're going to be able to find it. Give it a creative little name, and now you have it forever. And now you can go back to that first riser, make some changes, change some parameters, change some of the ways that it moves, duplicate again, freeze again, and make yourself 10 or 20 of these exploring different ways in which a riser can become interesting. If you're a beginner and tutorials like this are kind of fatiguing because you're learning a whole bunch of random information from YouTube tutorials, do check out my Foundations of Electronic Music course, which is a course I made to take you from absolute beginner to an intermediate level producer over the course of a few weeks. We have a Discord channel where you can come meet other producers, give feedback on each other's tracks and help build each other up. Leave a comment below if you found this helpful, like the video and subscribe to help this channel grow. And until next time, stay producing, be good to one another and take care. Bye-bye.